Good morning, everybody. Welcome to um, session three um, on this Friday, October the 30th, um, the 19th Annual Education and Career Expo. We want to thank all of you for joining us. My name is Luis Rodriguez. I'm the executive director for RGV LEAD. Uh, and on behalf of RGV LEAD and our board, along with the Expo Committee, we thank you for joining us. This session is Dressing for Success, along followed up by uh, some presentations from uh, some featured programs of study universities uh, from across the state of Texas. So without further ado, we'd like to thank Workforce Solutions Cameron, who is a partner with us um, on helping provide this expo along with the following sponsors, Texas Gas Service and uh, the Harlingen Manufacturing Association. So dressing for success plays a key role in, in you know, first impressions. Um, I was always told that uh, um, uh, CEO, when I worked for the Boy Scouts at one time, said that uh, you need to dress for the position that you want. So I started dressing up uh, a lot better, and now I find myself as an executive director for a local nonprofit here, you know, in the Rio Grande Valley for RGV Lead. So um, just take that into consideration. Um, always dress for the, the, the position you want. Uh, know your audience. Know when you're going. Um, obviously, if, if you're going to be out in the field and working, you know, you might wear the jeans and the boots and, you know, a button down shirt as compared to, you know, if you're in the office or you're going to a meeting with the high level donor, you might, you know, wear a suit. You might, you know, comb your hair a little different. Uh, so it just depends. Know where you're going. You should have your clothes ironed and clean. Uh, avoid. Uh, that's always been a, a something that's been told to me as well. Make sure your shoes are polished. Uh, a lot of times what you do when you go meet with individuals, the the first thing that they're going to see is when they take your hand and they look, they're going to see your shoes. So make sure they're polished. Um, take the time, you know, once a week, uh, twice a week, depending on, on what you're doing to, to make that happen. So, and then just, you know, highlight yourself, be yourself, make sure that, you know, the clothing that you're wearing uh, is, makes you colorful, makes you, make you stand out. Uh, that's always been good food for thought for me. So, First, we have uh, Faith Escobar. She's from the Harlingen Medical Center, and she, she uh, is the executive. Give me just a moment. Trying to see my screen. Executive assistant. So I believe she has. There's a video. Is there a video there, Elisa? It's um. It was in the folder because it was a. It wouldn't load on there. Ah yes. Excuse me. Give me just one moment, everybody. And there was a there was a comment said the you know civil engineer. Yes, if you're a civil engineer and you're working, like I said, um, dress for the the where you're going to be at. Right. Um. Obviously, if you're in a civil engineer, you're going to be wearing the boots, the hard you know the steel toes, and making sure that you're safe. So give me just a moment. Hello, everybody. Good morning. My name is Faith Escobar, and I am the executive assistant. At okay, I found it. Now I gotta find my webinar. I'm trying to find it. Give me just a moment. All right. I don't know where I'm at now. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Hello, everybody. Good morning. My name is Faith Escobar, and I am the executive assistant um, at Harlingen Medical Center here in Harlingen. We are a hospital um, under the company of Prime Healthcare. Uh, we have two sister hospitals here in the Valley. We have Nat Medical Center in West Dakota, as well as mentioned Regional Medical Center 
in mission. So Bell didn't know we're all kind of we're connected in the same network under the same umbrella company. Um, so I'm just going to tell you a little bit first off um, about our mission here. So for verbatim, our mission statement is to deliver compassionate and quality care to patients and better health care to communities. So that, you know, it, we one, we say that every morning in our daily huddle, I believe that it is it is really imperative to a company to not only to have a mission statement, but to exercise saying it, right? So our directors have a daily huddle every morning, and that's the first thing that off the bat the CEO leads them in, in stating our mission statement so that we don't ever forget why we're here um, and what we're here to do. So, you know, and our CEO, he does a really good job of reminding us that we are in the best business that there is, in our opinion, um, which is caring for people, right? That's what we do at hospitals. We care for people. We make them healthy. Um, so I've been I've been very very lucky to work here and and within our healthcare system and for a hospital just in general um, for about a year and a half. This is my first kind of jump into into healthcare. Um, and again, my role here is executive assistant. And so what that kind of entails here at HMC. Um, one is just keeping track of the day-to-day -day operations of the C-suite. So that being our uh, chief executive officer, Matt Waltoff, our chief nursing officer, Amy Flores, and our chief financial officer, Michael Bergstrom. So I've been, I've been really, really blessed to work for such a great um, set of individuals, a great C-suite. They really, you know, do a great job of leading. They lead us fearlessly. Um, you know, everything starts from the top. So everything that they expect from their employees, they, um, you know, they practice, they, they do practice what they preach. Um, and just with me specifically, they have done an awesome job of really kind of immersing me in, in all the facets that are, um, that are healthcare and specifically healthcare administration. Um, so some of the hats that I wear here um, are one, I work with physician contracting. So I manage all the physician contracts. Um, so that's just essentially making sure our doctors all have a contract in place that is valid so that they can practice here with no with no issues. Um, I also handle handle um, multiple the the vendor contracts. So you know people that we do business with, whether it be for our carpets or for you know whatever whatever sort of vendor we need for the hospital, we keep track of it um, as well as our leases. So we work very closely with our corporate legal team. Um, our real estate and our physician to to keep everybody in line and make sure that everything is is not only current uh, but valid. So uh, apart from that, I also have a hand in marketing. So I handle the social media management here at the hospital, um, specific agency. So uh, if you see you know any Facebook posts, any Instagram posts, it's more than likely something that I posted. Um, so I create content, you know, take photos, uh, create stories interview patients as testimonials, anything of that sort, um, just to keep you guys current with kind of what's going on, you know, because we know how much social media plays a part, um, you know, in, in, in today as we know it. Um, another aspect that I work in um, is, is just kind of being, being the middleman between our C-suite and whether it be directors, employees, or physicians, kind of keeping everybody on track, everybody organized. Uh, planning strategic planning meetings or department head meetings or um, our, our board director meetings I leave that um, so so it's, it's we, wear, we wear a lot of a lot of hats here but it's an amazing place to work and I couldn't be more blessed to be here um, so for this webinar they have asked us to uh, deep dive into you know kind of two two things that that will help you guys uh, to succeed, you know, post-graduation. Uh, so one, I will be giving you guys a little bit of advice on what I think, um, you know, helps to improve your employability skills. Um, and not only that, but dress for success specifically and why it plays such a big role in the workplace. Um, so first, um, the first question was, uh, do you have any advice for students to prepare for employability? Yes, I do. And I have learned a lot of these the hard way. Um, so number one, I think it's imperative that you guys network yourselves and start now. Um, you know, meet all the right people, join clubs, do whatever you need to do to network yourself, to market yourself. You know, I went to school specifically for marketing, but let me tell you, 
you, marketing is just is not just social media. It's not just billboards. It's not just ads. It is everybody markets themselves daily, right? You're selling yourself, whether it be to your teacher, whether it be to your parents, whether it be to your employer. Um, you are constantly selling yourself. Um, so network as much as you can. You might not think that that these um, you know relations play a part now, but they will in the future. Um, another aspect is is get involved. I think that that is huge. That is that is such a big part um, of education is getting involved, whether it be volunteering. You know, you're, you're able to to add that to your resume. Whether it be internships, I think that is great. You know, and even starting in high school, you can start now. Um, you can start in college, but intern. Be as involved as you can. Immerse yourself in whatever industry you know you love. So whether you think you're you're going to be a physical therapist, you know, if you if you want to do that, then look look at at clinics, look at rehabs, and say, hey, you know, what can I do? Can I shadow? Um, you know, things like that. Get get used to the world. You know, because um, you know, I think a, a, a big lesson is knowing what you're passionate about. Find what you're passionate about because if you um, expose yourself to it now, you won't deal with having to change your major or, you know, doing things like that. So really just, just know what you want to do um, to set yourself up for success. Uh, so another big key uh, skill is communication skills. I cannot stress that enough. Communication is key. Um, not only really, not only just, you know, the ability to talk to somebody, um, but you need to know how to deliver certain messages, right? Um, so not all messages are easy to deliver, but you have to know how to deliver them. You need to know, you know, how to speak to certain people. You need to know what works and what doesn't. You need to not be afraid to speak in front of people. Um, public speaking is huge. You know, it's going to play a big part in college. It's going to play a big part in um, with your employers, you know, you're going to have to interview and that's that's a form of public speech. So, you know, really kind of tackle that that fear if that is a fear of yours. Problem solving, I think you need to be a great problem solver. Um, you know, learn how to work past things and to you know work forward and, and to make sure that those problems that occur don't happen again. Um, and learning, you are never going to stop learning, let me tell you, never, 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 never. Never become complacent. Never think that you know everything there is to know because you don't. I promise you, you are going to learn daily. Um, and that's part of becoming an adult is, is realizing that you don't know everything. You know, adults don't know everything, um, you know, but, but keep an open mind um, and, and just continue to learn. So the next question was, if I had any advice to help students become successful in life in general, um, so one, I think establish short-term and long-term goals. I think that that is kind of uh, overlooked a lot of the times, but that just keeps you going, keeps you working towards something. Um, time management, stay organized and learn how to prioritize. You know, that's huge, that's huge, 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 and employers love that, right? They, even if it's on your resume or your application process, stay organized and show them from, you know, right off the bat that you know how to prioritize. Um, balance, balance yourself. You know, it's not all about work. It's not all about school. You need to have a balanced life, whether it be school, work, um, your home life, right? So whether that be making time for your friends, making time for your family, making time for your significant other, keep that work life balance um, or that school life balance and stay happy, right? Because we need to care for ourselves. So that's the, the, the it's imperative that we ourselves first because if we don't take care of ourselves and we are not going to be put our best foot forward whether it be at work or at school um so participate right so at school participate in class volunteer in the community um at work volunteer if they need somebody to do something else um participate you know that that goes that goes far with professors or with employers um you know to 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 just remind them, you know, why you're there and that you're there to learn and you're there to to progress, um, and it'll it'll really just keep you on the right on the right track. Um, and so finally, again, I can't stress enough: find your passion. If you have fun doing what you're doing, learning what you're learning, you're never gonna go to school or work a day in your life because you will enjoy what you're doing. Um, so that's kind of what I have as just as far as you know some of the lessons that I have learned. 
um, and things that I think would allow you to, you know, achieve success. Um, so now specifically to talk about dress for success and why it's important. Um, so one, first impressions, right? That first impressions are imperative. Um, so really you have about, studies show that you have about seven seconds to make your first impression. So you have about seven seconds for somebody to assess whether or not they think you're capable for the job or will be successful in class. Um, and that number is actually decreasing pretty quickly. So now it's actually about five, uh, five seconds. But you want those five seconds to, to, to hit it hard, right? And you want to establish yourself as the success of, successful person that you're striving to be. Um, so if you want to be seen as competent or uh, as a student, as an employee, as whatever it may be, you need to dress the part um, because that's right off the bat, you know, what, what they see first before you even start talking. Um, so studying really do actually show that professional dress makes you feel more confident, more powerful, and more focused on the details. So you're not going to be worried about, oh my God, is he seeing, you know, is my shirt wrinkled or is my hair bad or, you know, things like that. You get to focus on what you're actually there for um, and be prepared. So people perceive a well-dressed person as a leader, right? So if you go to an airport or if you go to the mall or wherever you go to a restaurant and you see somebody dressed professionally, you automatically think, oh, that's a person you know, that's, that, that person is a leader. I wonder what they do. Are they a doctor? Are they a lawyer? Um, are they an engineer? Are they a manager? Are they, you know, somebody who leads people? That is just, that's just how, you know, people perceive. Um, and, you know, fashion and um, style are subjective, right? So that's just kind of based on, on somebody's likes. But there is, there is a standard, there is a, a you know, some, some norms, especially in the business world. Um, so one, begin with, with basics. So I'm just going to kind of dive into specifics as far as dress for success. Um, begin with basics, match, 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 match. Um, you know, if you're wearing dark pants and a dark coat or um, belt and shoes, right? You don't want to wear a black belt and brown shoes, things like that people notice. Um, you know, as, as trivial as it might seem to some, it is what is noticed. It's just, that's just how it is, right? Um, and you want to feel confident. You want to like what you're wearing. You want to look good. Um, so color, you know, I am not scared of color. I know today I'm, I'm wearing black and white. Um, but color, don't be afraid of it, right? But wear it when it's appropriate. There is some, there are times that are appropriate for an interview. I would probably, you know, kind of stay with the grays, the blacks, the whites. Um, but again, when, you know, let's just say you land the job or you go to, you know, you have a, a presentation at school, know what's appropriate, but you know, color is, is not, it's not frowned upon, just know how to wear it. Um, and there are, there are kind of standards. So keep it clean, right? So keep not only your press lines clean, you know, keep yourself clean, self hygiene, make sure your teeth are brushed, you know, make sure your hair is brushed, make sure um you know your your everything is tucked in and everything looks nice because you know again that's that's the first thing we see right i don't want to be focused i don't want to be interviewing somebody and focusing on you know the the stain that they have here or you know the odor that's coming from you know something that might have been thrown in the dirty laundry for too long um keep it clean and hygiene hygiene is huge don't forget about your hygiene um and dress for the occasion right so whether it be, you know, obviously there's black tie events, um, you know, dress the part, whether it be, you know, for an outside event, if you're going, um, you know, to a dinner or something, dress a little bit more formally, you know, and if, if your workplace is a little less, then, you know, no know, know when to turn it down. Um, but you can have, you know, whatever style you want, um, you know, there's, a plethora of styles here at the hospital, but everybody looks, you know, there's a standard. Um, and so, you know, as far as what employees expect from their, uh, what, what we expect for our employees as far as dress is one, be aware of the dress code. There is a different dress code, you know, in different places, right? At school, there's, it's a little bit more lax if you're going straight to school, right? Um, but even at school, they have a dress code, you know, you can't, 
go maybe to revealing um, some things about nature. But I know here at HMC, um, you know, we are very, very, very stringent on our dress code. Um, so not only for professional dress, so I work in administration, so I just so happen to um, have professional dress, you know, a nice blouse, slacks, an A-line skirt, a nice dress that's not too short, a blazer. Um, but we have our clinicians, right? And it's really going to be based on whatever industry you fall into. So our clinicians, our nurses, our physicians, CNAs, techs, uh, radiologists, whatever it may be, a lot of they wear scrubs, right? But there are still things that we require. Um, so for our nurses, you know, no nail polish. You know, they cannot have nail polish because they're working, you know, directly on patients a lot of the times. So the, the girls, they have to have their hair tied back if they have long hair, or even guys, if they have long hair, hair has to be tied back. Um, so again, back to standards, um, we do have, you know, our environmental services team, you know, they have to stay covered because they don't want any bodily fluid on them. They don't want any uh, chemicals that land on them. They have to be covered um, to to ensure their safety. And a lot of it is is because, you know, not only just a visual, but because of safety. Um, engineering, steel toed boots, you know, long pants, um, all of our clinicians have to have closed toed shoes, things like that. Um, you know, so uh, again, it does it does depend on the uh, the industry you're in, but there there are always standards, and the dress code is you know you need to know the dress code for your employer. Um, so business versus casual dress. You know, business dress is a little something like this. You know, I have a high neck. I'm not you know I don't have a a, a plunging neckline. You know, white and black. I have a, a a, a blazer on, you know, long pants, heels, uh, moderate shoes, neat hairstyle, um, you know, makeup is not, is, I don't have, you know, hot pink lipstick or, you know, purple lipstick or something outlandish. Um, so stay kind of moderate, solid colors um, for men, tie dark shoes, matching socks, matching belt with the shoes, uh, women, pantsuit, A-line skirt, blazer, um, so that's kind of more of the, the business dress, right? So then there's also business casual, which is for the men, more of a polo shirt, maybe a sweater, a vest with a collar, um, optional tie, leather shoes, still slacks. Uh, for the women, solid color shirt or blouse, maybe a cardigan, a skirt, uh, you know, some kind of maybe a, a, more of a skinny, skinny leg pant, uh, but still tucked in and still neat. Uh, so casual workplace, right? So that's more of like jeans, rolled up sleeves on a button down shirt, khakis for men, even women. Um, for women, maybe jeans, blouse, um, a tucked out blouse. It's not, you know, as as um, as clean cut as, you know, tucked in with a belt. Um, so that, that's more of the casual. So those are the kind of three levels. Obviously, the things you don't want to be wearing to work are shorts skirts that are way too short, dresses that are way too short. Generally, I give about two inches um, above the knee and that's kind of being forgiving. So I would really, anything um, at the knee level or lower um, for women, men stay with slacks, make sure they're pressed. Um, you know, for women, spaghetti shop shirts, no go. Um, short skirts, no go. Flip flops for both men and women, no go. Sandals, no go. Um, for women, if you aren't privy to the heels, um, you know, wear flats, you know, but make sure they're moderate, make sure they're conservative. Don't make, you know, I don't want a huge puff ball on the front of the flats or something like that. Um, you know, stay kind of in line with, with the dress code and, and, and with the, the standards. Um, that's, you know, that's essentially business dress, why it's important. Uh, you know, how professors, employers, managers, or just people in the world are going to, are going to perceive you, right? Um, it's not, it's, and it's not always about, about somebody else's perception, but it's about the way you feel. You, you know, work, you'll work better. You'll feel more confident. Um, you know, you'll, you'll just carry yourself in a higher light. Um, if you're, if you like the way you're dressed, if you're dressed the part. Um, so don't ever forget that. It is, it does play a part. Um, you know, I am super proud of all of you. I know that you guys are going to do great. You're going to be successful. Um, you know, I wish you the best of luck in whatever you do. If you jump into school, if you jump into work, whatever you do, 
um, know that you do have, you know, people who are rooting for you. And if you guys ever need anything, if you have a question um, on anything or just need advice, feel free to reach out to me. Again, my name is Faith Escobar. I am the executive assistant at Harlingen Medical Center. Uh, my email is fescobar at primehealthcare.com. Uh, again, that is F as in Faith in my first name, and then Escobar. E-S-C-O-B-A-R at primehealthcare.com. So if you have any questions or need anything, do not hesitate to reach out. Um, but again, best of luck to everybody and thank you for having me. Um, and I hope you really enjoy this webinar. Have a good one. We'd like to thank uh, Faith for that information. A lot of great information um, being shared there. Uh, I'm gonna flip my screen, give me just a moment. So we definitely appreciate the uh, faith. I know you're uh, on the call, I believe. But once again, thank you so much for all the information that uh, you did share with us. Thank you so much for the opportunity. I appreciate it. Here we go. Okay. Next, we have Sandra Alanis, uh, Director of um, Physician Integration from South Texas Health Systems. Hello students, my name is Sandra Yvette Alanis and I'm the Director of Physician Integration for South Texas Health System. I'd like to talk to you about a couple of points that I'd, I'd like to cover about directing for success. And the first one is being prepared. Um, it is really important that you actually are prepared every day for work, whether it be, you know, getting your outfit out the evening before, deciding what you're going to wear, maybe putting things that you need by your door, if you're going to go to the gym, packing your gym bag the night before and leaving it there. So the second point I'd like to talk about is taking your personal appearance seriously. And by that, I mean your personal hygiene, making sure that you look good from head to toe, making sure that your clothing is ironed and pressed, that your shoes are polished. These are very simple things you might think, but quite honestly, we find it day to day in, in a natural work environment. The third point I'd like to talk about is hey, dress like your boss. You know, they always say uh, dress for the job that you want and not the job that you have, right? So you know what, taking a cue of what everyone else is wearing in your workplace, and but always look up, right? What is your manager wearing? What is your boss wearing? And that usually goes with the corporate culture of the company. So some companies, you know, like Microsoft or Facebook, they wear, they wear t-shirts and jeans to work. That may not work uh, in all environments, and especially not in mine working in the hospital environment. So making sure that you dress like your boss or dress like your manager and, and take, the, take the visual cues from them uh, that will be really important to keep in mind on, on a daily basis. The final point I'd like to talk about is dressing for your day. Really, it's important that you actually take a look at your calendar, take a look at your, at your agenda, and see what it is that you've got to do for that day. So I know that if I've got two business meetings and I'm going out to two business meetings, well, I certainly will wear a suit or, or something a little more dressy. Uh, but when we talk about business casual, I think sometimes we – we take that and we don't take it as seriously as we should. Business casual doesn't mean, you know, jeans and some flip flops and a t-shirt. Business casual depends on your workplace. So dressing for your day is remembering to look at your agenda, making sure that you know what you've got going on. If I've got two meetings in the office and then I've got a meeting that we're doing a ribbon cutting out somewhere and I know that I'm gonna be walking through a field, I know that I'm not gonna be wearing, you know, uh, high heels or something like that. So it really is important to dress for your day. Take a, take a look at your agenda, making sure that you dress appropriately for that day and what you've got going on that evening. So when we talk about business dress or business attire versus casual attire, really it's important. Remember when I talked about dressing like your manager or your boss? Um, depending on where you work, your business dress or more, or more elegant dressing, that will really depend on the job that you have, right? So for us in the hospital environment, we wear suits, we wear, you know, women wear skirts and dresses. Uh, but when you compare that with our casual days, casual days will probably mean a pair of slacks, a pair of khakis, with maybe a logo shirt from your company, but it certainly never means flip-flops, it never means jeans. It, it really, it really, you really want to try to avoid, the, avoid those kinds of things. And believe me, we see it here in the, in the corporate world and what will happen, we'll send the employee home. I mean, it really is not appropriate for you to, uh, if it's good for the weekend, probably isn't good for work today. So always keep those things in mind. It really is an all-inclusive thing. You need to think about yourself as your own package, as something that you're presenting to the world, not only to everyone in your family, everyone you come across, whether it is at lunch, but it's also to your colleagues. Really, it's important to take a look at yourself before you leave uh, before you leave your home in the morning. It's important also to have a full-length mirror or a mirror where you can really see yourself and make sure that everything about your appearance is 
is the way that you want it to be, right? That you look polished, that you look presentable, that your personal hygiene is right on right on point. And so these are the things that you need to remember on a daily basis because you know what? They may seem like simple things, but they really aren't. And remember, it's not always about money and how expensive your suit is or how, you know, oh, where you bought it. That really doesn't make any difference. You can find things in any store, in any retailer, and making sure that as long as you are, uh, your personal hygiene is on point, as long as you are pressed and dressed, your shoes are polished, your belt matches, all of these things are very important things, and that has really nothing to do uh, with buying at a fancy store. What it really has to do with is you taking pride in your personal appearance. So please remember this when you are out in the workplace, when you're looking for jobs, dressing for success is not only about a job, but it really is being successful in every day of your life. like to thank Ms. Alanis for that and um, you know she made some great points um, and I will follow up um, quickly on that. Um, some of the suits that I have and that I wear um, to certain meetings and 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 whatnot um, actually were purchased at uh, a thrift store uh, when I lived in Austin, Texas. Um, I did make sure however that I did get them uh, tailored um, to my fitting and you know so they didn't look big and baggy um, but I got two suits for $30 um, and then I picked up a lot of sports coats, a lot of the ones that I wear today. So, um, you know, just like she said, doesn't, doesn't mean you have to go out and uh, purchase that $500 suit. Um, be my, you know, just dress for success and, and you're going to be good. So we're going to jump to the next uh, presenter. Uh, I'm, I'm actually going to come back to this. I'm going to give our following presenter, Mr. John Cunningham, an opportunity to come on. He's a live presenter. Uh, he's with us. Um, Mr. Cunningham, are you there? Yes, sir. I'm right here. Love the background. I can't hear you. Your mic's okay. Can't hear you. Can you hear me okay now? Testing, testing. Can you hear me? I can uh, I can hear you on on my side. You can okay. Can Louise, can you hear me okay? Are you good, Mr. Cunningham? Yes, I'm ready. If uh, can you hear me okay though? Uh, there we go. I got you. Okay, right now. fantastic. Do you, do you like my background? I do. I love it. I don't I know if you've heard me say that, but, <laughs> but uh, like that's the building there at Texas State. My wife's an alumni, so anyways, I'm gonna jump off camera and let you you do what you got to do. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Um, everybody can see my screen. Okay, thumbs up here. Or verbal confirmation. I think I'm sharing the correct. Yes, yes. yes. I got it. Yeah. I got it. You can. We can see it. All right. Thank you so much. So, um, excellent information that you all have received um, up to this point. I was definitely listening on, and so a lot of great points here. You do need to dress for success, and um, I think kind of going in line with that is we all have different goals, and you're going to find yourself in a lot of different settings where. Um, you do need to think about that and what your professional life looks like. Now, Texas State, we have a lot of different ways that we can help you in the professional area, and we can definitely talk about um, some of the things that our university does to help you. If you're um, worried about the cost of getting a new suit, you know, places like our career services are there to help you. Um, we actually have a closet where you can check out suits, so you actually don't have to spend any money. So. We are just, invested in, just as invested in you all as students and making sure you're successful. So all of the points that you are learning today do translate into many colleges and we're gonna help you with that. Um, but as a, a leader in Texas, as far as institutions are concerned, I'm here to really just talk briefly about Texas State and what we can offer you all. Um, this presentation will be fairly brief just to kind of give you an idea of what Texas State has to offer. But if you all have any questions and you'd like to interact with me or um, learn more about Texas State, I encourage you to get in touch with me. Um, this is my contact information. I am the regional manager for the South Texas area. So I'm your go-to go person when it comes to Texas State admissions, financial aid, scholarships, all of that stuff. I'm here to help. With that said, let me give you a little bit of background about Texas State. We are the fourth largest public university in Texas. 
We were founded in 1899, and you can see we've come a long way being a larger institution. Sometimes that scares students, but we're in an awesome location. We're in San Marcos, Texas. Many people might have visited or passed by. It is a small college town. We're nestled in between San Antonio and Austin. We do have a second campus in Round Rock. If you're interested in the allied health fields, you might find yourself out there. But the majority of our students, we have about 39,000 on our campus, and the majority are going to be in San Marcos. So it's a beautiful, beautiful area. That's something that really stands out when it comes to our university. We have a river on our campus. There's a lot of history. Again, we were founded a long time ago, but we have famous graduates such as George Strait, Lyndon B. Johnson. We're actually the only university in Texas who's graduated president and vice president. So a lot of really unique things about us that make us a little bit different. Being that we're in the heart of Texas, we, we attract a lot of students from all over the state, from the Rio Grande Valley, from West Texas, North Texas, but we, re we actually represent all 50 states in our student body, as well as 74 different nations. So it's a very diverse campus, and we do have a very strong culture of um, friendliness and, and camaraderie. If you're looking for that full college experience, you will find that at Texas State but we definitely have a lot of support systems too in place to really help you all be successful. I mentioned, you know, kind of the closet with career services, or we have things like a food pantry, but we offer lots of tutoring um, and we're really invested in your success as a student. So with that said, being a larger institution, that might scare some students, but I highly recommend um, giving it a look. You might find that we have an average class size of 23. So we definitely are a large university and that comes with a lot of perks and benefits, but don't let that number scare you. When I saw it for the first time, I was going, oh my gosh, that's, that's a huge university that I don't want to just be a number. We are definitely a, a great school and strike a good balance between the small feel, but with also big opportunities and a lot of the things that you might want out of a school. Now, the first thing that you're probably wanting to see in a university is do we offer the particular major you're wanting to pursue or the career pathway? Well, we do offer 10 different colleges and over 200 degrees at Texas State. Some of the ones we're most well known for are things like education, criminal justice, we have excellent engineering programs, other very unique areas like psychology, um, we have anthropology, we have wildlife biology. So there's a lot that we're well known for. Um, it's a lot, it's too much to go over in this short amount of time. And if you have questions about a particular major, reach out to me, I can give you fun facts about each of those. But for most students, we usually have one or more areas that you can pursue in terms of majors and helping you achieve your career goals. So keep that in mind. We do offer a lot. We are a larger university. And again, this is just one of those perks. We can help you out. In terms of student involvement, we have over 400 student organizations and just about anything you want to do on our campus, you certainly can. So getting that full college experience is important. Yes, you may you know, need to keep up the academic side and, and do well in your classes. But most of our students who are connected to the campus and have the right supports in place, but also are they feel comfortable and happy with where they're at, are likely to be successful as well. So this is a big part of the Texas State student experience. There's no shortage of things to do. Again, just north or south, if you want to catch a concert in Austin over the weekend, or maybe go down to Six Flags or the Riverwalk, everything is just a short drive away, but we have a very active campus. So definitely a big perk on, on our campus. Briefly, we'll talk about admissions. Now, we do offer different ways to get accepted to Texas State, but be rest assured that we are test optional this year. So if you're a senior right now, don't worry about the SAT or ACT scores. There is a chart there that shows there is a guaranteed way to get admitted to Texas State based on your rank and test scores. But if you have not tested, everybody goes through a holistic review. So we offer a lot of ways to get into Texas State. Just do a good job on your application. There's a few steps here that you really want to pay close attention to as you go through a holistic review. We're looking at all the qualities in our students' applications. So number one, on Apply Texas when you apply, be thorough in that application. We care about community service, extracurriculars, um, leadership roles. All of those things are very important. So be aware if you guys are not seniors yet, if you're a sophomore listening to this right now, you have plenty of time to start building that resume. And colleges and universities do appreciate that, and we do look at that. Number two, submit an essay. We want to get to know you a little bit more. And if there's anything you want to tell us in your application, this is the time to do it. So while it says it's optional, it really is beneficial and to your advantage to do that in the application. And then, of course, you want to send your transcripts and then also pay the application fee or get a fee waiver. So that's getting more into the heart of a lot of details about how to get a fee waiver. So contact me. If you want to save $75, we're here to help. And there's a lot of ways to get um, that fee waiver on your file. 
We do have a priority date of March 1st, which is kind of late. And so we always want to be proactive in thinking about deadlines when we're applying to colleges. March 1st is technically true, but if you're interested in scholarships, then I really recommend our next deadline here, which is December 15th. And you might see that in that third group of scholarships, which we have competitive scholarships that are holistic. We don't require test scores for that, um, but we also have assured scholarships and in another category called national scholarships. So there's lots of opportunities here, but you just need to make sure that you apply and be admitted by December 15th and then submit the application on our website. And again, I can provide that information to you if you're looking for that. One thing to keep in mind is, again, deadlines are key, not just for scholarships and financial aid, but other things like securing housing. We offer a lot of options to live on our campus. So just be aware that timing is key your senior year. Don't um, procrastinate. Don't let that sit and wait. It could mean money or it could mean you don't get the first choice of room that you wanted to or maybe you don't get to room with your preferred roommate. So just keep that in mind. Um, timing is key and we're here to help you um, along the way. If any of you are interested in visiting our campus, we anticipate on opening up a little bit more in the spring, but we do currently offer virtual tours and a lot of ways to see our campus virtually through um, special events. So visit our website, take a look at those, really take advantage of this downtime. You know, last year, this time, I was not able to offer this to students. You either had to come up to campus or you had to go with a group with your high school. So really, there's a lot of things now that you're able to do in the comfort of your own home. Really take advantage here. Start to get to know the colleges more because there's a lot out there, but you'll find the one that's right for you, and you'll do that by visiting. So we encourage you to come see our campus virtually, and maybe you want to do that again in spring to narrow down your options, but I'm here to guide you through that. If you all have any questions, though, I'll be fielding any of those. Feel free to take down my information, but I want to thank you. Again, a lot of great information you're learning today, so just um, Feel free to um, use the contacts that you're hearing today and take advantage of all the support that you all have. Thank you again. Definitely appreciate you being with us. Um, for those of you that are considering Texas State, a couple of fun facts that I'll share with you. Um, being from the Rio Grande Valley, I was unaware when my wife started attending Texas State, my legs were sore just walking the campus because it's a hill, you know, the hill country. And uh, you go up and down and the steps and I mean, great time and then um one of the i think one of the traditions you have and i don't know if i'm spilling the beans for you or not but uh jumping in the san marcus river once you graduate in cap and gown and getting that picture and getting all wet um my wife loved it all her friends loved it uh great experiences just like every other university state university you know and, and locals they have their small traditions so that's one of the ones that texas state has so john thank you so much for being with us we definitely appreciate your time and hopefully the juniors and seniors that are out there you know Go visit, go take a look, you know, it, it might not be for you, it may be for you, but it's just an opportunity that, you know, we're providing with you and with individuals like John and everybody that's with us today and, and throughout the week uh, have taken the time to be here to, to let you know what's out there for you, resources. So, John, thank you so much for, for being with us. Happy to be here. Eat them up, cats. <laughs> what's the sign? Is it the is it the hand? Is it still? There you go. Yep. Art of Texas, right. but it faces the audience. It looks like Texas, and your fingers go right where San Marcos is. And then we're bought. So, yeah. <laughs> All right, John. Well, thank you so much. Appreciate you. you. All right. Let me make sure I'm back on the right screen here. We're going to backtrack just a bit to get you another college. All right. Hi, my name is Patty Montemayor. I am the director of ITFU in Bustleville. Today, I will be going over our program overview and what that entails. IDAU is a college completion program partnered with Southern New Hampshire University, a fully accredited nonprofit private university in the New Hampshire area. By partnering up with SNHU, we strive to provide the best of both worlds that being an accelerated online curriculum and in-person support. With the accelerated online curriculum, you can find affordable tuition, the ability to work from anywhere with a Wi-Fi connection, flexibility, and project-based learning. With in-person support, being a part of a community, having a mentor and an advisor to guide you along your academic journey, opportunities for growth outside of the classroom, internships, student success, 
and college to career workshop series, an opportunity to grow your professional network and making lifelong friends. First, when we talk about a supportive environment and team, this is what you can expect from our DAU. We have facilities with laptops, printers, and reliable Wi-Fi to ensure student access to the proper tools to be successful. You get a mentor that provides you with individualized coaching to guide your unique college journey, providing support with admissions, academic clarity, and social emotional resources. Also available to you are interns and other students in the program. And college to career and success student workshops that are created and presented by our very own advisors and an ever-growing community of students just like you. So many of us have had to choose between work, family, or school in the past. And at Idea U, you don't have to. Our flexibility schedule allows you to work on school around your family and work obligations. We know you have a busy life and that work is rigorous. Because of this, we require our students to dedicate 12 hours per week at our center tackling your assignments. You are in charge of your own schedule, and this is how we at IDEA were different. You are not tied down to a strict Monday through Friday school schedule. Instead, you are the creator of the learning schedule that works best for you. SNHU offers two associate degrees and three bachelor degrees with an average of students completing at a nine to 12 month pace for the associates and 12 to 18 months for the bachelor's degree following the accelerated track. Another big part as to why IDEA you partnered with SNHU is because of the affordable tuition. SNHU offers a flat rate all-inclusive tuition that is $5,500 per year. Pell Grant is awarded at $6,345 for this school year, meaning if you are approved for Pell, you do not need to pay anything out of pocket. There are three four-month terms which cost $1,833 per term. You can utilize federal financial aid, which then turns to Pell Grant and or federal loans, employer tuition reimbursement if your organization offers that option, or you can pay out of pocket and get on a monthly payment plan. So what is needed for admissions is a high school diploma or GED, and there are no entrance exam scores required. If interested, you first fill out the idea new application after the application is processed, then an in-person interview with an idea new staff member to see if IDEA U with SMHU is a good fit for you. All students must complete a five-week academic onboarding process to do a minimum of 12 hours per week at our site, meet with their advisor weekly, and submit two projects per week. Currently, IDEA U has three convenient locations in San Antonio, Brownsville, and West Idea U has only been open and operating for two and a half years, and we have 145 graduates to date. If you are interested in starting with Idea U and SNHU, please reach out to the Idea U Westlake Director, Idea U San Antonio Director, or our Idea U Brownsville Director. Don't delay, start your college journey today. Thank you so much for your time. <clears throat> We'd like to thank uh, Idea U for uh, sharing that great information. Um, we'd like to thank our expo committee as well. Thank you so much to, to them for uh, helping us, um, um, helping us uh, put this webinar on for you all. So thank you all to all our expo committee. They may be on, they may not. But uh, once again, thank you all so much. And then last but not least, uh, there is an opportunity for you as an attendee to, um, to <clears throat> hopefully uh, get a prize or you know, win a part of a raffle that we have going on. Um, what it is is uh, Chromebooks, wireless earbuds, portable phone chargers, wireless printers, a couple of books from How to Get the Job Done by Todd Ayton. Um, you know, pull out your phone open the camera, point it at the QR code. There's going to be a survey that pops 
um, there's going to be a server that pops up. Um, it'll send you to a, a survey, complete the survey, and then at that point, submit it, and then your name will be um, in the in the raffle uh, for these items. In case you missed it, or in case you want to visit any other sessions, we're going to be posting them on our YouTube page, um, and then you can complete those. We have 20 sessions this week, and you can watch each and every one of them, get the QR code, uh, submit the survey, uh, and then have a better opportunity to win. You only win one time though. So we wanna thank you for visiting us. Um, John reminded me if there's any questions, you know, if you have any questions, reach out to him. Um, this is gonna be on, on our YouTube page. Uh, if, you, if you need to, you know, get in touch with him, email me, uh, let me know. I'll get you his contact information so you can reach out to him if you have questions. Uh, but this completes our session number three on Friday, Dressing for Success. Um, and then last but not least, the next one is personal technology while at work. Um, that's at 1 p.m. Uh, let's give you a good chance to um, go grab lunch. We definitely appreciate you being with us. Uh, there's, you know, thank you so much, and we'll see you soon. We have a special guest in our last um, presentation at the end, so hopefully you can join us. Thank you.